Hello and welcome to the Blytheway Mining Show. Our very special guest today is one hot commodity they're involved in. First, cobalt. They have a cobalt project in Ontario. They also have a refinery in Ontario and they have a project in Idaho. And here to tell us all about the company and its future prospects is Trent Mill, CEO. Hello, Trent, and thank you for Hello. joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, Trent, our viewers are probably going to be looking at your stock right after mm -hmm. this interview. And so there has been a slight decline in your stock in the past two days, so maybe we should just address that first. Sure, yeah, let's start there. So over the companies, we're not even a year and a half old. And so we put together in short order four companies, built up a shareholder base, raised a lot of money. The last acquisition which brought us into Idaho, which is really going to be a flagship in terms of a development asset, uh, closed on the heels of it, of it, a weakening market. The last three months, we've got lithium, cobalt, graphite stocks are all down. The cobalt sulfate price in China is down. You got Elon Musk talking down the need for cobalt in the battery, which is absolute nonsense. Um, so, so we're you know we're unfortunate the deal closed at the wrong time, I suppose, from a market perspective. Having said that, you know we're financed, we got great assets, uh, we're in the summer months here in North America, so I think we got to breathe through it. I got to breathe through it, and 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 things will will settle in time. I understand that having the refinery is a way for you yeah. to get um, cash flow earlier than it would be from mining the cobalt right away. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about the studies that you're doing on the refinery right now? Absolutely, yeah. So we're in a hot market now, and the deficit in cobalt is real, and it's, it's going to stay there for some time. But mine development takes years, right, five to ten years to put a new mine into production. And I think we've got one that can be fast-tracked. But having said that, we've got a refinery that's it's built, and more importantly, it's permitted. And the significance of the permit of a North American refinery like the one we have, and it's the only one like, like it, is that we can treat arsenic-bearing ores, which is North America. Cobalt in North America has arsenic. And so you can't just produce a mill concentrate, as juniors often do, and then sell it off to a third party. You need to get that out, and we've got the facility that can do that. And so we're in a position to look at early hash flow situations from other mines, um, early projects from recycle material, muck piles in the cobalt camps. There's lots of things there that we can treat, and we're just putting the final touches on a refinery study on capital requirements and operating costs of a restart. And do you have an expectation on when that study might be completed? Yeah, within the next 60 days. We're close. We're close. Oh, that we've close. Got, yeah, we've got some drafts that we're kicking around. What we need to decide on is what is the right size of this facility in part? It, it was operating historically at 17 years of history, uh, care and maintenance for three years, and when it last operated in 2015, it was at 24 tons a day, which is too small. So we're going to resize that 40 or 50 tons, and we're going back and forth, and we've got permitting commentary and some met work to incorporate, so we'll have that together very soon. And the capital to expand it would be? I think order of magnitude, 75 million, 85 million, and that maybe maybe up to 100 in that range. So so it's, it's, a, it's a big amount of capital. Having said that, we've got a replacement value already of 100 million. And again, we got the permits. Anybody who wants to build this has to go through likely a multi-year permitting process because you're taking arsenic out of the ores and you're depositing that back into an autoclave tailings facility, which as a miner I'm comfortable with. We render it inert and stable, uh, but, but if you go into a community and say, we're gonna deposit arsenic, uh, that's tough, that's tough. So we got, we, got a, we got a good head start. And I think once this thing is up and running again, it becomes a standalone asset that could take on feed, not just from our own projects, but from, from North America. So it becomes really interesting. That is interesting. And so I understand you're also working on the Idaho project at the same time, and yeah. uh, we can expect a NI43-101 yeah. uh, around October. So you're doing some drilling on that uh, project right now as yeah, well. Yeah, we are. So when you look at where do you get cobalt in the world, of course, we know the DRC is two-thirds of it, and, and we've got a lot, of, a lot of challenges there. So Idaho is particularly unique because it's got primary cobalt deposit. Everything else we're seeing in the world, other than one mine in Morocco, is byproduct of copper mines and byproduct of nickel mines. Idaho, it's the other way around. You got copper as a byproduct of high-grade cobalt mines, and so these are sort of more discreet, i.e., smaller capex underground projects that have a lot of grade. Idaho was previously worked by the Naranda Mining Company. There's a historic resource from 1980. It's got wonderful grade, wonderful ore geometry. It sits at the right angle from mining, good mining widths. So I'm really excited. I think that historic resource, we're going to leave that in the rearview mirror and people will like what they're going to see out of this come October of this year. Excellent. And what's happening with the Ontario Cobalt Project? So Ontario, I view Ontario as order of magnitude bigger in terms of its potential from Idaho. So whereas Idaho can be fast-tracked, it's on patented property, a known resource, and we've got a series of zones that we're looking at, growing strike. It's, it's, it's almost easy because you know the steps you've got to go through to move that forward. Ontario, we're, we're looking at 50 historic camps and, and we're looking at 50, sorry, 50 historic mines in a single camp, and none of which went more than 200 meters, all of which were mined for high-grade material. So we're trying to do like 
Canadian Malartic, like a Cisco did, like Detour Lake did. We're trying to look at an old underground area that was deemed exhausted 50 years ago and rejuvenate it as a high tonnage, lower grade operation, so a big open pit. And we're starting to see some really interesting results at Kerr Lake. Um, these things take a lot of drill holes, so Idaho will take the lead in terms of development project. But, but keep watching Ontario. I think, I think people are going to like what comes out of there. And another question that shareholders will obviously have, or investors, because Ontario has always had to deal with the Native community yeah. kind of issues. Are you in discussions and communications with the Native community? Yeah, and we're not. You know, my, my experience when you, uh, as you move sort of west, you, know, you, get, you get fewer and fewer treaties. So west and north gets a little trickier. And I, I've, I've had the, uh, the opportunity to negotiate uh, impact benefit agreements with First Nations groups in Ontario and British Columbia, various um, levels of sort of complexity, if you will. Uh, where we are now, this is not, we're not in the far north and we're not in the far west. You know, we're, we're just north of Sudbury. Uh, a couple of First Nations groups that we're talking with and we're you know, offering them uh, job opportunities. And like, so the dialogue is very good. And, and, you know, the trick to that, it's not rocket science. You've got to engage early and often. And, and, and we're doing that. And I think if you show some respect and you get the dialogue going, the rules of the game, if I will, you know, the, the kind of interactions that miners are, should be having with First Nations, I think we all know what we got to do. You've got to be open-minded and have the foresight to do it. So. And, and being inclusive, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, mines are, mines are built outside of the city, right? So you look at, you look at what you can do. Young Davidson, when, when Enrico Gold, now Alamos, we were part of that team. We had two IBAs. We spent $900 million from first drill hole to production. Um, you know, more than 70% of that revenue ends up in the regional economy. First Nations are a huge part of that. So you got to give job opportunities, training opportunities, contract. And it's a win-win, because otherwise you're bringing contractors in from the city at twice the cost. So it just works. That's excellent. And I understand um, you just closed a financing deal. And how far yeah. does that take you on your work program? Yeah, so after we finished our first, our three-way merger last November, we raised $30 million in December. Uh, almost all of that was institutional demand. And that, that typically means it's just stickier money. You know, it was private placement, so four-month hold. When the four-month hold paper became free trading, nothing moved, which was great. So we're down to about $25 million now, as we sit here in, in, in June. Uh, we'll invest probably about 15 of that. We've got $9 million going into Idaho. We're, we're, we're working our way through a $7 million budget in Ontario. So we'll finish the year with about $9 million December 31. So, so the, the, the downdraft we've seen in, in our space, in the EV metal space right now, um, while frustrating for me and investors, we're not going to go raise money at this level. So we're going to do our work. We'll get the stock price up, and, and we can we can last on our treasury for, for certainly a good year. Oh, that's great to hear. And so we have news flow coming, uh, other news flow coming ahead of the October news flow with yeah. regard to the resource statement. Yes. I assume there will be more assay results coming out for yeah. investors to hear about. Um, progress, of course, on the cobalt refinery, Yes. Um, which is very excellent. I didn't realize it was so soon. I was yeah. thinking it would be maybe first quarter next year, but 60 days, that's, that's pretty very great soon, news yeah. that would be interesting for shareholders to hear about. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us, right. and uh, we look forward to reading about your news flow. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Blytheway Morning Show. Please have a profitable day.